Hi guys, Aaron Clark here. Hope you're all doing well today. Welcome to part two of a two-part rendering tutorial that I've been working on. In the first part, we had a look at the 3D model itself and the things that we can do uh, to it to make it look a bit more realistic, a little bit more render friendly for the, uh, for the final image. In that one, I used a halo ring with um, sort of micro micro claw style of setting in the shoulders. For this one, I've just switched over to a simpler one, and that's that's because I'm using a interactive rendering renderer here, um, and it's just going to be a bit quicker and a little bit a uh, little bit faster, so we're not waiting too too much for that to resolve, um, because rendering gems and things like that does take a little bit more uh, um, a little bit more resources and a little bit more time. So in this video, we're going to be using, um, well, I should say that I'm using V-Ray 3.6. Now, at the time of rec recording, uh, it's the most recent uh, V-Ray. And if you're a Matrix user, you'll be using V-Ray 2, which I think comes with Matrix 9. Uh, if you're a Rhino Gold user, you'll be using Arion to render. Um, but you could be using Keyshot or Maxwell or Thea or Octane or um, RenderMan or any of those other, other rendering programs. So the plan here is to keep this sort of um, as light as, as general as possible. And there's really only sort of two or three points that I want to hit on here. Um, but let's jump in and um, let's fire up my asset editor. And this is going to be a bit dry for some people, so I understand if you're, if you're bored to hell and uh, just want to sort of stop it now, but um, let's crack on and I'll show you something really cool um, that you can do with um, with V-Ray 3.6 as well. Uh, so for all your Matrix users out there, um, no doubt this will hopefully be implemented into Matrix and it's going to knock your socks off once I show you it. So let's have a look at our model and I've got, uh, like I said, it's a solitaire and I've just got a sphere here as well. Um, and when I'm sort of evaluating my reflections, it's really handy to have a sphere because it, it sort of helps you sort of understand what's getting reflected um, and why. So this is my asset editor. I've stripped this back to basic. Um, I've sort of gone over here and I've reverted to default render settings and you can see I've got no materials. Hopefully, if you're um, well, if you are using Matrix or uh, Rhino Gold, you'll have some metals and diamonds already nicely made for you. So you don't have to worry too much about this step here. Um, but I will say that um, when I was using Matrix, there was a metal for 18 karat white gold, and it had a bit of a yellow hue. Um, and one of the things I, I always hated was that yellow hue, and I thought that if you're making something in yellow, in uh, sorry, in 18 karat white gold, um, you know, hopefully you've got a nice, you're using a nice alloy, and it's not going to be too yellow, and hopefully you're going to be rhodium plating, rhodium plating it at the end, and um, you know, if that's the case, it's going to be indistinguishable from platinum anyway. So my reasoning was I always just use platinum for any white metal, and that was sort of just a a, a nice sort of stand-in for everything there. Let's make a metal and let's apply it to these guys here. And we can see the updates there. So this is going to be metal. We can call that white gold or platinum or whatever, but metal for now. And you know, if you're starting from scratch, this is how you make a metal. So again, if you're using Keyshot or Maxwell or whatever, it's, it's going to be the same. So take the diffuse down, take the reflection up. It's going to make it sort of like a um, like a shiny black. All you have to do there is just uncheck for now. And we've got sort of like a shiny metal. Nice. Um, if you want to have something like white gold, uh, sorry, like yellow gold, you just come and click something over here and play with that. That value there and if you want a rose gold you just change the hue to sort of like a nice sort of rosy color uh, but for the moment I'm just gonna, I'm gonna back it off pure white for a little minute and make it a little bit sort of darker and a little bit more metallic and you can see straight away that that's our um, you know that's our result there with that with that metal let's make a 
diamond now um, again diamonds are, are pretty straightforward uh, so it's diffuse down reflection up and we can take our refraction and crank that all the way up as well now we've got a IOR value here index of refraction for the, for the material and that basically describes how light enters a transparent material and how it disperses throughout um, throughout the material basically how that material bends light now diamond has a value of 2.45 for the index of refractivity and you can see that immediate change there once I start you know messing with this that's sort of getting close to air you know that's getting quite quite high but like I said 2.45 2.45 uh, is, is, is good for a diamond so that looks pretty good there um, now a diamond also has dispersion or that sort of prismatic or, or rainbow effect when when light passes through it and breaks up into its separate components and that's controlled here by the Abbey value and you can crank that all the way down to like five and get a pretty ghastly result there um, or you can have it all the way up and have a, a much more sort of subtle result normally I'll stick it on 80 and, and leave it and you get this little bit of a, a rainbow effect there now for the um, live updating I'm just gonna switch that off and that's just gonna make it make it update a little bit quicker for us um, so I promised you something really awesome with um, with V-Ray 3.6 and I will hide that and I'm going to import I'm going to import this model here okay so this is something where we've um, cut out our little blocks for the micro parve uh, sorry the micro claw style of setting let's apply the metal to that and it looks pretty awful. It's it's really sort of square and chunky there, isn't it? Um, not nice at all. And you know, uh, I can go and try and fillet these back a little bit. If that works, it kind of works a little bit. But you know, that's going to be a lot of work there. You could come into um, like ZBrush or 3D Coat or something like that and start, you know, trying to. Um, polish these crisp edges is it going to work? it's not even working so you know softening these guys here like that and if you were doing a, a really sort of high end render you would absolutely come in and do this um, but I'll pack that off so that fillet's not there you know um, Rhino also has this apply edge softening and uh, let's see what that does that's going to make a difference no not really it's it's not even uh, not even wanting to do that I don't know what these settings do I don't know if that's going to make a difference yeah so yeah, it doesn't even want to do that um, so how can we sort of soften this off well like I said this is going to knock your socks off come into maps and now um, I had a look Keyshot does this as well and Maxwell does this I'm afraid you're out of luck if you're a Rhino Gold user and at the moment you'll have to wait if you're a Matrix user but hopefully this will be sort of implemented soon come to your bump mapping and there's a whole bunch of different uh, options over here and you want to click on edges watch what happens pop there you go let's just soften it off and we can change that to point 0.2 make it a bit stronger and that looks pretty good to me um, 0.5 is probably going to be way too much. We'll start to get uh, a few different, you know, weird sort of artifacts going on here. Um, 0.2, even 0.1. Yeah. So obviously zooming in close, it doesn't hold up, but that's a really nice way of just sort of breaking those edges and getting that nice little sort of nice little sort of bit of, you know, reflect reflectivity sort of coming off those crisp edges 
um, and often I'll just have a little little point to setting here and that's just going to come through and um, anything that you haven't softened or haven't fill it like you might not have done that under rail there um, that's just going to put that nice little sort of rounded edge on it um, yeah that's awesome isn't it um, told you you'd love it all right I'm going to switch that off for now because I don't actually need it for the other model I've got and uh, get rid of all that delete that and we'll bring back this guy so the final thing I want to have a look at is um, what gets reflected in in the ring what gets reflected in the metal so these reflections are controlled by an image these aren't actually lights that sit above that sit above the model there's nothing in my model space except for the ring the sphere and that ground plane so when we have a look at when we have a look at this sphere here this is why it's handy to sort of see um, sort of see what's getting reflected so these reflections like I said are controlled by HDRI map it stands for high dynamic range image um, and this map can actually provide the lighting for your scene as well not just the reflections um, or you could sort of just I think I've got mine sort of set up as like just normal sort of diffuse light I don't think this is being driven by this HDRI map now let's have a look at our settings here um, let's have a look at the environment and this is where this image here sits and we can have a play here and say well let's have a look for Ooh, a different map that looks kind of cool let's go back a step and crank that up to two and that's going to make it a bit lighter for us yeah, maybe five maybe five's too much three cool and that looks kind of cool um, let's have a play a little bit further can't see anything there thank you um, this is like an outdoor kind of twilight kind of thing going on here crank that up to maybe 10 yeah that's pretty awesome not really what we want but it's good to uh, good to play and experiment so the question is where can we get these maps and most um, rendering programs will have a few built in I like to jump over to the internet and uh, have a browse over here for uh, this guy called ZBYG and he, he lives on DeviantArt and he's got a couple of different uh, HDRI packs that you can download and just mash that download button um, there's one there and you can sort of see some weird sort of colorful ones going on there um, there's three packs here sort of a bit more um, industrial sort of warehouse looking ones here this one's nice it's got the uh, the umbrellas that you might see with the uh, a photo shoot and uh, yeah a couple of different ones there so you can download those and have a play if you want to take this a step further you can go to um, light maps HDR light studio and uh, you, know, you can sort of see it's used here with uh, in the automotive in industry um, and that sort of really allows you to really specifically control the highlights that you get, the reflections that you get, um, what parts get lit, and you can create these sort of really complex HDRI maps that you can then save out and, and use for your renders. So I've done this a few times myself, and you can create these nice sort of studio lighting maps. Um, so have a play with that. That's pretty awesome, uh, awesome bit of bit of software there and uh, have a play with these uh, sort of preset ones here as well so let's have a let's navigate to, to where I keep those and uh, well let's go into all here ZBYG I think studio studio 32 was uh, was my favorite um, now that's way too bright. So let's crank that down to maybe two. Two's not enough. Five. Yeah, five's okay. And you start to see um, you start to see what's going on here. Um, we've got some nice sort of crisp blacks, which help define the shapes in your model. Um, if you want, um, you can come back in and and play with. 
um, play with how this map sort of gets gets applied. Well, well, I'll tell you what. Let's let, let's have a play, and uh, you can sort of see how this black spot here sort of moves around uh, moves around the scene. And so, depending on uh, depending on your angle, that's going to change. Uh, so something like that's 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 sure, whatever. Change that back to zero. That's nice. Um, and you can see this is this is why it's important to um, well not important but helpful to have this this sphere sitting in your scene as well, and that sort of helps you evaluate those reflections and and what's going on. Uh, so that's that's basically it for this uh, for this little video. Um, I know it's pretty dry stuff at times, but uh, hopefully you learnt something. Um, like I said, my, my big big tip there is um, have a look at what gets reflected uh, reflected in your um, in your metals, and that can have a big uh, a big influence on the look of of the render. Uh, and again, I should say that with the ground plane, um, there's different things that you can do with different textures um, reflections. I tend to like having just like a nice sort of basic white plane. Sometimes I'll have um, a couple of custom planes where it's like a little sort of maybe like a paper or a cloth texture. Um, maybe that might be a video for a later date, but at this stage, uh, that's that's all I wanted to talk about. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, I hope it helps, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.